The gospel reading for today is uh, taken from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you are doing unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, Amen. I see it to you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man once grown old be born again? Surely he cannot re-enter his mother's womb and be born again, can he? Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I see it to you. Unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Mm -hmm. Do not be amazed that I told you. You must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it is goes. So, it is with everyone who is born of water and spirit. So, this uh, passage that we are talking about, Jesus Christ is talking about, one cannot enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and spirit. In the terms that they use today, unless he is born again. But let me explain to you this one later on. And um, you can understand what is being born of water and spirit. Okay, <clears throat> let me take you back to the Old Testament. In the times that um, God said to Adam and Eve, <clears throat> please listen very carefully about this one, because this is very, very short topic. Thou shalt not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, because when you eat, thou shalt die okay those shall die but of all the trees in the middle of the garden you can eat you can enjoy the fruit thereof they are for you so that is where the beginning of this story this passage therefore has to be understood in the context of what happened in that command of god then here comes the serpent the serpent approached eve and said did really god tell you that uh, once you eat of the tree, of the fruit, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is planted in the middle of the garden, did he told you that you will die? He said, sure, he did so. But the serpent said, no, you shall not surely die. You see that one? Remember that one, that is a first promise given to the generation of our ancestors from the beginning of time. Satan said, you shall not surely die in the form of a serpent. So that the promise was accepted and received by Eve. And so she ate of the fruit and gave it to Adam, okay? So from that situation on, the whole generation fell down, separated from God. That is why that generation has to be rescued so that in the books of the Old Testament, it tells us how God has planned to rescue the people that he has created, the people that he loved, you and me. We were separated from God. And so in Isaiah, it prophesied, Isaiah said that Jesus Christ is the suffering servant. He is the plan of God, that God is going to send to send to this world to rescue the people from the fallen generation, from the fallen situation because of this obedience of Adam and Eve in the garden. This is where we are. We were separated from God. So from that separation, we need somebody to connect us back to God. So in that situation, in order to, to be connected with God, we have to be born again. <clears throat> this is where the word born again comes from. We have to be born of water and spirit because our first parents, they have plunged us down to disobedience. 
And that kind of life is not connect, it's, it's no longer connected with God. And there are two things that we can do today. My brothers and sisters in Christ. <clears throat> we have to be born of water, number one. And we have to be born of the spirit, number two. In this situation, <clears throat> Nicodemus answered, <clears throat> how can a man be born again if he is already grown old? So on this passage that we have read in John 3, <clears throat> let me explain to you that once that very, very clearly you understand why we need to be born of water and spirit. Okay, <clears throat> let me read to you again. Jesus Christ said, no one can enter the kingdom of God. No one without being born of water and spirit. Two things, without these two things that we need to do. Okay. This Pharisee, his name is Nicodemus, one of the rulers of the Jews. <clears throat> he came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. A teacher who has come from God. So he is Jesus Christ here. He is the one who, who, who comes from God. No one else is. Even though all the, all the rabbis, they were not told that they came from God. Only the teacher that he came from God is Jesus Christ. Remember this one very well, very well. Because he is the plan of God to bring us back to God again. And in doing so, we will become born of water and spirit so that we will be forgiven from our old generation, separated from God. Now we will become born of water and spirit that we can enter the kingdom of God. And truly, we will become the children of God. In that sense, we will become born again. It is not a born again by joining a congregation that you don't know what you're doing, all right? You must understand this. Jesus Christ's work is the one that makes us born of water and spirit. <clears throat> so how? This uh, Nicodemus um, is uh, the Jewish um, authorities, one of the Jewish authorities. Actually, um, he, is, uh, he is the one <clears throat> who wants to know first what is the meaning of being born of water and spirit. And Jesus Christ rebuked him gently. He said, uh, how, can, how, can you, how can you not know this one? And you are a teacher in Israel. You see, the, the, the question, that mild review, is truly a very hard question to answer. I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of flesh is flesh. What is born of spirit is spirit. So do not be amazed, Jesus Christ said, but I told you, you must be born from above. This is it. We must be born from above. We are no longer, we can no longer continue to be born from our parents, uh, Adam and Eve, because we have fallen, right? So now, in order to be with God again, we must be born from above. And from above is Jesus Christ who came from above, who came from God. So by being adopted as the children of God, we will become born from above. From above. We become the children of God in such a way because of what Jesus Christ is about to do. Okay. <clears throat> the wind blows, he said like that. The wind blows, he said. Where it wheels, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from and where it goes. So that means you don't know where it's come from, you know, where, where, where it goes. I mean, it's not coming from this, uh, from, from, from this earth. So when you join the congregation of born again people, it's not that way. That's not. That's a different story altogether. Be very careful. It's not coming down from this earth. It's coming from above. We don't see. We don't feel. We don't know where it comes. We don't know where it goes. That's why Jesus Christ said, "Somebody invite you. You gotta be join us to be born again." That's not true. That's false. Okay. Let me explain to you that where it goes. Jesus Christ said, "It is with." everyone who is born of the spirit what is born of flesh is flesh mm -hmm. so what is born of adam and eve is flesh what is born of the spirit is a spirit so that we have the holy spirit with us as a seal of ownership by god that he is going to give us when jesus christ has finished his work of redemption amen, amen. this is where we become born again <clears throat> so as soon as the first week of producing at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Remember, he died. Okay. It's over. The church begins to put 
before us the great discourse of Jesus, the teaching rather than the happenings. They were spreading the teaching rather than what happened, okay? The teaching of John, the spreading from John, will continue right through Pascal times, okay? It is surely not an accident that the series begins with a response to Jesus from the faithful, with two responses to Jesus from the faithful in two great sacraments. First thing, we have to be born of water, and that is baptism. <coughs> The second thing, we have to be born, we have to be uh, born of the Spirit, and that is receiving Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. Amen. He said in John 6, 53, unless you receive me in the form of body and blood, take my body and drink my blood, you have no life in you. The Spirit is a Spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh. What is born of the Spirit is a Spirit. That is what he's talking about. What I have spoken to you, he said, is spirit, and it gives life. There we go. There you go now. So be careful of this, uh, what you read from everywhere else. Uh, you don't understand what they are talking about, what you're talking about. This is what it means. So my brothers and sisters, now look. In um, John 3 and uh, John 6, it's, this is, there are, these are the two things that we have to do. We have to be initiated. Baptism. We have, to, we have to be, we need to be baptized into the death of Jesus Christ. And when he resurrected back to life, he said, take this all of you. So he initiated the Holy Eucharist in, in Corinthians. Okay? So he said, before the day he, he was betrayed, he took bread. Break it. Give thanks to God. Take this all of you. This is my body. After dinner, he said, he took the chalice. He gave thanks to God. Drink it. And he said, Take, drink this, all of you. This is the cup of the, this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. There we go, my brothers and sisters. We are no longer, therefore, when we do that, under the influential disobedience of our parents, Adam and Eve. But now, under Jesus Christ, that is sent by God to bring us back to himself, we are now under the command of Jesus Christ. So by doing that, we are released from the separation in the old disobedience of the word of God in the garden. We are now into the obedience side where we have to obey and follow and follow the word of God, the word of Jesus Christ in the, in the Holy Eucharist. Mm -hmm. It's two things you must not forget, my brothers and sisters. So let me continue. Jesus in these two great sacraments to which the faithful has to respond. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night, and that is highly significant in John. Jesus is the light of the world. And when Jesus, Judas goes out to betray Jesus, tells us in John 13, 30, that it was night. And you see the resemblance of this one? Nicodemus begins thoroughly muddled and is rebuked by his failure to understand about the freedom of the spirit, his failure to understand his own tradition as a Jewish. But Nicodemus is the figure of discovery, the discovery that every Christian makes again and again and again. He will come all right in the end, for he took part. He took part in the burial of Jesus. He is perhaps the example of a good Pharisee, for John stresses that salvation comes from the Jews. In John 4, verse 22, and some at least believe, it is perhaps significant that only here, verse 3 and 5, does the formulation of kingdom of God come in John. This was the traditional formula for ideal, the perfection of creation, so vividly promised by Isaiah and the rest of the prophets. So the Pharisees is consistent in perfect obedience to the will of God when he demands when the demands of the law would be fully observed. So in order to, to fulfill the righteousness of God in our lives, we have to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees of the Pharisees by obeying the law. We have to add love into it. Not just obeying the law, but love into it. Loving the Lord Jesus Christ that God has sent us to rescue us. Loving means obeying His commands and living by His command and living by his standards. Amen. Amen. 
Through all this historic discovery, we can feel that the Spirit of God breathed where it will. Born in Greek and in Hebrew, the same word means also wind and breathe. We cannot control the wind. The wind blows where it wills, and no one can control the Spirit of God. Once we are born again, God takes control. And that being born again is having faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. In the early church, in the early church, the, um, <clears throat> they were the apostles. They were the apostles, the people that the, uh, Jesus Christ taught. There are two different sides here. They were the apostles and the Jewish authorities. The Jewish authorities have high priests and have uh, Sanhedrin. They have uh, Pharisees and Sadducees in there. But the Pharisees, they started by Jesus Christ himself, where <clears throat> we adopted some of the traditions of the old traditions of the past, the teachings of the prophets in the Old Testament, where there, we, have, we also have a priest. But this is a different altogether. We also have a priest. So we, we follow that kind of tradition. But these uh, Jewish authorities who, and the Gentiles who were persecuting Jesus Christ are different side of the story altogether. They were not believing in what Jesus Christ said and they were not believing in what the apostles' teaching is after the resurrection. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, today you know that you've been born again because of what Jesus Christ did. If we believe in him and follow his teaching that is given through the apostles, and the prophets of all, then we will become, we will be able to enter the kingdom of God that God has prepared for us. We are no longer under the dominion of Satan in the Old Testament where we are separated from God because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve in the garden. But now in obedience to the word and command of Jesus Christ, we become the children of God and the seal of ownership is given to us by means of the Holy Spirit. So that when we take the Holy Eucharist with us, Jesus Christ said, Flesh is flesh, spirit is spirit. And now, if you take my body and drink my blood, there is life in you. If you don't, there's no life in you. Mm -hmm. This is where now. Are you going to obey or disobey again? My brothers and sisters, I invite you to obey what Jesus Christ has said, that we will all be born again. So we go to the Holy Eucharist and receive him in the form of bread and wine, because that's what he said. That is his word. If he speaks, it is an edict, it is a command, it is a law. He is the only king that God has given us. He is the king of kings in this world. If he speaks, that word will not go in vain. It has to be obeyed. No one can disobey. You disobey, you disobey to your own peril. But now, God has rescued us. He has fulfilled his plan. We are now here. Jesus Christ went back to the Father after he resurrected. Going back to the Father is uh, prophesied as well. So after Pentecost, 10 days after Pentecost, going back to the Father, now he is showing himself during those times to his apostles and to some people around him. And brothers and sisters, unless we obey, we will remain in the dominion of the evil, dominion of Satan in the Old Testament through Adam and Eve. But if we obey the word of Jesus Christ and receive him in the Holy Eucharist, then we have life that signifies that the Holy Spirit is in us and we are no longer under the, the dominion of, the, of Satan in the old days. We've been forgiven of our disobedience in the past. We are no longer separated from God. But through the Holy Spirit, through the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ, we became, separate, we became connected back to God again. And His kingdom belongs to us. We come into His kingdom by doing these two things, born of water and spirit, baptism and the Holy Eucharist. My brothers and sisters, God bless you. Take care of yourselves. Don't forget that God loves you so much. Amen. Amen.